Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It's that time of the week again. Hope you're all doing well in whatever part of the spinning you are at. My name's Jade, this is How to App on iOS. I've got your friend, my friend, everybody's friend, Pete Johns here with us today, and we're going to have a rant. Oh yeah, I hope you're all doing well. Let's kick off with a song maybe, yeah? How about that? Let's go. The hope is gone and there is nothing left to comfort in the end And you say, even when you're feeling good That something else will come around the bend And I'm always thinking Always trying to hold on And I'm And the party will be at an end real soon And you say you might be happy now But I have a million ways to open up the wound And I'm always hurting Always trying to hang on And it's hard to Get away from me, you might as well just settle in and deal. And you say you're stuck with me forever, this will always be the way you're gonna feel. But I don't believe you, I can still carry. Howdy do, how are you all everybody? Welcome to the show. My name's Jade. This is 
the rant <laughs> the friday rant so glad you could join us um if you are watching over there oh i should mute my phone if you are watching over there on facebook welcome along uh you can join us over here at youtube anytime you like at uh, youtube.com slash jedstar or you can watch the show live every day from how to app on os.com because we live stream there as well how cool is that um but we have a very special guest who can now unmute his mic ladies and gentlemen your friend my friend everybody's friend the legend himself the man from studio live today pete johns welcome to the show pete again <laughs> hello it is always good to be here and thank you uh, for, for playing my song i didn't even ask for that uh, but uh, no i uh, hope everyone is well for those in the uh, u.s who have eaten piles of turkey or whatever it is you do on this uh, <laughs> special day that none of us uh, over here in australia actually understand uh but yeah more power to you party hardy people and be safe first and foremost yeah don't turn into bean bags be good, <laughs> be good. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought that, like, I've, I've seen some posts of people like, we're in comas, like, we can't move. And I'm like, beautiful, you're a captive audience. We've got, like, four hours of live streaming for you today. So all you need to do is sit there, relax, put your feet up, uh, grab a beverage, and uh, we'll, we'll provide the ranting. You can just uh, listen <laughs> to, uh, and enjoy. But uh, no, thank you for having me on the rant again. Now, because my audio was crap last time, the folks can just give me a thumbs up to make sure that I'm actually coming through the right microphone. Last time I was coming through my camera and uh, people pointed that out, that the, the audio guy came on and couldn't work out his own audio. So Mistakes be... make you better, Pete. <laughs> they do, and I'm sure we'll talk about that today because uh, I've made a few doozies in the last couple of weeks and I know you've had your new Mac and that's been uh, laden with challenges, uh, as has it for me so uh yeah i'm sure we'll chat about that and much much more yeah you you didn't uh, do a live stream and go hey it's not working it's not working and it wasn't plugged in <laughs> that was me so <laughs> I, I i did there was an icon on the screen that really was just um click the next button that the icon was telling me to just click the next button and i couldn't work it out i thought i'd done something wrong because i thought it was one of those weird apple things that i'd, I'd, I'd somehow bricked my machine before i'd even used it so yeah Nice. Well, let's say hello to some folks in the chat. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I've missed the uh, some of them from the beginning. I can go back. Let's do that. Wow, there's a lot of people. Thanks for being here, everybody. So it's good to see you all. Uh, clearly, Epic is here. Um, Gary Hubs, Mark, welcome along. Peppy and the Bandits, welcome. I haven't seen you here before. I think you just subbed, if I am correct. So thank you for that. Uh, Nina's here. Uh, Doctor Zor. Um, welcome forward. Um, Andy Goldsby, Cold Acre, thank you. Cold Acre, one of our admins, and Bubba as well. SM Borthwick, Russ, triple eight nine. Danny uh, Broderick, Tom Rochelle. Uh, anyone else I'm missing as I scroll down desperately seeking with my four eyes? Uh, Benedict Stewart. <laughs> uh, la, 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 la. I can't see anyone else there. If I have missed you, type at the bottom of the chat so I can catch up. So we say good day to Mark. Uh, I, I like Mark's comment here, which was Thanksgiving used to be about thanks for the year's harvest. So there you go. I didn't actually know that. I thought it was something to do with um, those buckle-headed people. Uh, I don't remember what they're called. Uh, <laughs> now it's about stuffing our faces and arguing with family. So there you go. History lesson with Pete, the buckle-headed people. <laughs> <laughs> Were they villagers, pil pilgrims? I don't know. I, yeah. All I know is from all I know about Thanksgiving is from American sitcoms and uh, Simpsons episodes. <laughs> so I know there's turkey involved, something to do with pilgrims, and it's controversial for various reasons that I don't care to go into because I don't understand them as we've clearly uh, articulated. <laughs> I think there's a part two to your college song here. <laughs> we could do the, the <laughs> Thanksgiving like song <laughs> and all the buckle-headed people. <laughs> <laughs> there's no such thing. Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure I offend people with my ignorance, but rest assured, it is merely ignorance, not arrogance, because uh, I just don't know. And when I don't know, I kind of just make jokes, and that's that's how I roll. That's more of an Australian thing that we're just like that's a bit weird and foreign, and we don't get it. So uh, if we don't get it, and we don't do it, then we don't understand it. Yeah, it's all right. We're a bit weird and foreign to everybody else, so that's cool. Well, uh, we, have, we have Australia Day where we just sit around, drink beer, and uh, have barbecues. But you know, that, I, I call that a Saturday. So, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Binny Sandu, I missed you there. So if I did miss you in the chat, let me know because shout outs are cool and all that stuff. So here we are. We're at the rant again. It's our, this is our third rant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they're proving to be quite popular. People like to see two people just sit around and talk shit for 
<laughs> it is funny we were talking in the pre-show that we're like uh, i think you said we're like the the, the old cranky odd couple of uh, mobile recording we're just like so did you get your mac jay He's like yeah Pete, how do you go with it oh i'm getting there i'm getting there i'm fit struggle but yeah people might again i think people like to I, I say this about live all the time people like you know well-produced slick live shows that give you lots of content lots of value People also kind of secretly like a train wreck. So if we can give you a little bit of both, mm. if we can have some devastating train wrecks as well as uh, it's giving you some actual content and some value, I think uh, I think everyone wins at the end of the day. Yes, it's all about value. And um, you know what? Let's just get the, the elephant in the room out the way because Ooh. value seems to be the thing. So I'm going to skip around the items today. I was going to start off with the max, but let's dump that oh. a bit further. Oh, is that enough, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it's... Black Friday. Well, it's Black Friday here in Australia. It's not Black Friday for the rest of you guys, but you wouldn't know it because <laughs> the sales have been going for a week and there's a lot of apps, folks. So um, I, I'm gathering people have spent a lot of money already. Um, if you have spent some money, let us know in the chat <laughs> what you've done what to you your hard earned cash on. Who do you blame? <laughs> and... Um, you know, I'll start off. So it's Black Friday. The one good thing I'm really enjoying about Black Friday this year is, look, COVID sucks and all that, and it's really terrible. And you know, we all know that. But yeah. hopefully, we're not going to see any of those videos full of idiots at the doors smashing through windows to fight over a sixty dollar TV, <laughs> punching each other. Let's hope humanity can get a one year without that. Uh I, I fear. I fear that we still will. Like, I I was watching the news, which is something I try not to do as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, they were saying, ah, oh, stores will be managing Black Friday specials much more differently now. There will be social distance, I don't know, what do you call it now, physical distancing requirements, and everyone will be required to wear masks. And I'm like, or, you know, you could just stay home yeah, and yeah. not go out and trample each other to get that five dollar tv that you don't actually need because you've already got one i i yeah i i honestly don't get it in the age of the internet i don't know i see people out and about like for unnecessary reasons like i'm someone who if it can't be delivered to my house in a box by a company named after a forest i usually don't <laughs> yeah I'll go and do it themselves like that's I'm, I'm employing postal workers uh and uh, and delivery people and packers and i'm contributing to the economy in my own way but you know what we can do it in a safe way because we live in the future and we have the ability to have stuff sent to our house and i'm a lazy prick so i like to sit at home and wait for packages to arrive speaking of which uh my, my grocery shopping will arrive at some stage so if i yeah, you see I'm, me I'm used to it I'm during used to the, the rant it's always a friday morning thing here uh, so if i walk out the door <laughs> it's not that jade's offended me it's that i have to go and uh, let the shopping man in because I'm so lazy, I don't even go to the supermarket. That'll be our toilet break for the show. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm fascinated to find out if anyone watching has actually done that. Has that, I've never done it. Maybe it's cool. I don't know. But have you ever done the queue thing? Have you ever gone out and tried to get the super cheap item? Because, I don't. again, I don't know why. I know, look, free is good. Cheap is good. I get all of that stuff. But we can get it all in our own homes now. And I just don't understand the need to go and do maybe it's just because i don't like people so much at least in person i like virtual people <laughs> <laughs> well isn't it's interesting you know uh back in the day back, back in my day back in the old days uh, everyone knew their posty you know and 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 the milkman and all that stuff and um you know that all disappeared you know the posty became like you know the, the old adage or cartoon posty would be he'd roll up and the dog would attack him and chase him up the street this yep. year, we've all got to know our DHL <laughs> delivery man, <laughs> our fast away courier here in Australia. I'm sure whatever courier you have in your country, you know that guy by name right now. <laughs> I, I love my dude, but he's got to the point where he start, he's, he's actually judged some of our purchases now. Mm. So uh, let, let's just say that occasionally cases of beer and cartons of wine come to our house. And there's there's one dude, he's like an African dude, and he rocks up to the to the place in his van, like cruises around the corner with like music blaring, jumps out of the car. He's like, hey, Mr. Charles, we got more beer for you today. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Like, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm ordering so much that you, you're able to judge me on, uh, on what I'm doing. And then, oh, what, what, I can't remember what we bought one time. And he's like, oh, you've got so much things coming for you. I'm like, yeah, it's Christmas season. Not all for us. We're, like, I don't even have to justify the things that are arriving at my house. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Does he come in a red car? No, no. it's a white man. No. He's a white man, man. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, red car would go faster. And I apologize for that accent. I actually have no idea what that accent was. <laughs> Certainly wasn't African. It was some sort of Spanish, but I'm the worst at accents. And again, it's ignorance, not uh, not insulting of any people. You should hear my Canadian, eh? It's uh, not good. Gary Gary Hubs would be uh, would be shuddering there if I tried that. All, all I can say is, let's go play some hockey and have some Timbits, eh? Like that's that's my oh, Canadian. God. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I used to be good at doing impersonations. I'm going down a de- <laughs> deadly path there. It's a bra 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 mula. Danny Broderick says he has purchased LumaFusion Cubase's three. Elite- oh. Elite Bias FX2, iSymphonic, maxed out this one. The list goes on. Whoa, Whoa man. That's some expensive buying right there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have all of those. <laughs> and, um, yeah, they they hurt. Uh, yeah. But uh, and again, if you uh, we say this about gear all the time. We say this about apps and we say this about everything. I know everyone's going to know exactly what I'm going to say here because I'm super <laughs> predictable. But it's not going to – like the gear and the apps and the things don't make the difference to your music. You've still got to have good music. And these are just the enhanced the enhancements of that i said on uh, yesterday's gear show i'm like it's like you cook yourself a really good meal it's the the freshly ground pepper that you sprinkle on top if you if your meal is crap doesn't matter how much freshly ground pepper you pile on that thing it's still going to be crap so do keep that in mind that it's not it's not all about the gear it's not going to be it's not going to be revolutionary it is evolutionary with your gear it's not going to change things overnight it won't happen overnight but it will happen (laughs) I don't know where we went with that. Um, uh, Steve wants me to do my American, and then I'll, and then I'll know you're looking at some apps there. Uh, but uh, I'll try and do my – shall I do my Steve Mara impression? For, yeah, for go for it. I can't, can't really do it. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, hey, Pete, um, uh, my, my high school football team just lost this weekend. Uh, so you can't do it. Um, no, it's college football too. I got it completely wrong. Sorry, Steve. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to hand over to you. I'm, I'm, I'll just sit here in the corner. Uh, everyone's. Uh, I know Patrick wants to hear my uh, Patrick from uh, Garage Band Guide, and I'll stuff it up. But I might as well do it now. Hey, uh, it's Patrick here from the Garage Band Guide. There we go. That's it. So that, that, that's that's a lot better than uh, than my Steve or my uh, my Canadian or whatever the heck that other accent I did was. I, I still don't. Know. He's probably going to punch me up now after that. <laughs> Uh, absolutely he's, he's known for his violence I've, I've yeah, yeah. <laughs> all those videos of, of, of him act, act, attacking everyone so i've got up the screen here of some apps because mm. there has been some changes overnight and there's been some things which i said would come to fruition and they have and one of them the first one is luma fusion folks so luma fusion has Weird. finally dropped and you know we most all of you know both me and Pete are massive fans of this. Pete does all of his work with it. I have done probably the most shows on on this show on Luma Fusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've shot all my video clips on it. I'm currently working on one now, so it has dropped. Uh, I can't even. It's, it was at half price. So it's down to about. Uh, no, it's, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine down to nineteen ninety nine. Um, only because I'm doing a Black Friday app show today, so I've been there researching. Things. So unless my data was wrong, uh, yep. it looks like a twenty bucks down from thirty bucks, which is a good deal. Yeah. It, it never gets cheaper than that. You're never going to get up for less than twenty bucks. And honestly, it is it is worth it. Um, I don't. Again, I don't tell you to buy many things. There's two. Th- if you're doing audio and video production outside of GarageBand, uh, you can pretty much get away with free stuff. The two areas that you can't, in my view, are video editing, because LumaFusion over iMovie is just next level and a half, and um, audio share. So they're, they're the two that if someone says, you know, what's your what's your desert island apps and you need to create video and audio on your iPhone or your iPad, I say grab yourself LumaFusion Luma and Audio Share, and all your audio and video needs are pretty much covered in those two apps. 100%. And the beautiful thing about it is, so they've just updated, um, yes. it's had this huge update, really amazing updates to the green screen capabilities and format uh, file formats. And the other amazing thing, which they didn't even really mention, was it has been optimized for Mac M1 computers. So it works beautifully. I've had it full screen yesterday, did some playing around on it on, on like, I can't remember if it was on this show or on the Patreon show. Who knows? <laughs> I did two hours stream on Patreon an hour yesterday. Whoa. Yep. Streaming's getting a bit crazy. Um, look, it's a fantastic app. You, you need to have it. 
Um, mm -hmm. I, and I noticed here, uh, so there's some other great apps up the top here that have just become cheap and they're normally worth a lot of money and they're high quality. So these are your Fab Filter apps. Um, so you've got Pro L2, Pro Q3, Pro R, Fab Filter Satin, Pro G, Pro MB, Pro C2, Pro DS. You've got the whole lot and they've all dropped by around 10 bucks each, close to that nine some of them are, um i'm actually doing a couple of shows on these over the next week or two i'm doing one on satin and a pro r so uh, pro r is like the state-of-the-art reverb app but they're, they're amazing I, I, i've not used any of the fab filter stuff and i should because i get asked about them a lot but again they're because I use the, the stock reverbs, the stock delays, the stock EQ, and, and and an app that I'm actually trying out today for the first time called Channel Strip, which is by um, the, the folks who do um, Rough Rider. I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but uh, it'll come to me. Um, Audio Damage. So yeah. they've got their own Channel Strip plugin, which is like 99 cents at the moment. So uh, I'm, I'm testing that one out. But yeah, I know, I know I should try these, but it's that thing. Again, I'm, I'm taking my own advice. I'm not using my own reverbs and EQs and, and delays and then going, oh, I, I need this to do more. They seem to do what I need them to do, but maybe uh, maybe I just don't know what's available. And I should try this stuff out. Like, like the Mac, I should take one for the team. The amount of times I've justified a purchase by my my viewers will want to know about this. I better buy it. Um, yeah, I think at the end of the year, I'm going to be like, wow, I've, I've done like $5,000 worth of taking one for the team. This is uh, getting a bit out of control. That's more than <laughs> taking one for the team. That's 5,000 of them. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll end up rooted. Jay. Yes, uh, right in the fanny. <laughs> Real life conversations spill into the show. I love it. <laughs> um, there's a few other people who have joined here too. So, uh, Cease Finney, is that how I say your name? I've, I, I, I don't think I've said it live. Maybe I have. Uh, it, it, it's that Case. So, Case from case. the Netherlands. So, yeah, and I don't know what the, I can't, I can't recall what the, FNY is, but it's yeah, it's our buddy Case uh, from up in the Netherlands, where it's probably about zero degrees. Right yeah, now. Nick Hamby's here as well. I don't think I missed anyone else. I'm just making sure. Cody Walsh, hello, welcome aboard as well. Thank you very much for being here. Good to see you too. Uh, and Ed, 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 Ed Zulinski, welcome aboard as well. Uh, so I'll just scroll through. What else? So Wavestorms an app I've looked at. Fundamental, great apps as well. These things have dropped. Um, let's scroll through and have a quick look here. Don't want to hang on too much of this because you've got a show coming up after this. I do, you're stealing all of my thunder. <laughs> well, <I'm, laughs> how many apps are you doing though? I'm doing 10. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, what, a million on sales? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It took me a while. Like I had to do a pairing down process to get to just 10. And eventually I focused on, because I'm a shameless self-promoter, I focused on the ones that I'd done reviews of. So this will be a video that makes you watch more of my videos. See, mm, always thinking, marketing. Yeah. So, and I put a so. link to the show. So <laughs> now, now I had a few people message me and say, am I doing one of these lists as well? Or like top apps. Oh, you should. I'm not because like I do apps every day. And I'll tell you, if you want to find the best apps, in my opinion, is go through all my videos and playlist and look for any videos that have over 200 views. <laughs> and and you'll tell that that's really that's the people will tell you what apps are good you know that they they decide so you guys actually do decide what i will do instead is i'm going to show you some an app that mm -hmm. i picked up yesterday that i think is really fun and exciting so let's open it up and see if it works so this is two bucks right mm -hmm. and it's called riff rider and i'm gonna i'll do a full show on it tomorrow uh, next week so it's i think it's uh, 2.99 australian so it's probably what a dollar something everywhere else really simple that's all it is you hit start and you hit create and it creates a riff and you hit play and it randomizes guitar riffs for you how's it here let's have a listen <laughs> So we'll hit create again. Hit create again. And if you hit the advanced section here, you can go to difficulty, character, rhythm, repetition, and texture. And you can change all these around and randomize it fully. So each time you hit create, 
and anything that you find is cool you can just hit the little star up the top and favor it and you've got all the notes there to learn the riff and a great idea to get yourself starting a riff if you're having writer's block that's really cool i wonder <laughs> if uh, i wonder if you can have an uh, the next step's got to be an ai metal bot yeah where it just creates metal you just like i want some metal and then it just plays it and you're just like more metal and then it just gives you even more uh, <laughs> If you could just put, if it could incorporate some double kick drums, uh, then I think all metal bands are out of jobs right now. Um, although you need to be able to scream, don't you? It'd be hard for the AI bot to scream because I heard that robots uh, can't feel and have no emotions. Oh, I don't know about that. Depends on how they're programmed. <laughs> I was talking about this with my flatmate the other day. We were talking about you know AI taking over the world and stuff, and uh, how it's just absolutely impossible. It can't happen because every bot is actually programmed by a person hey jobber welcome to the chat jobber haven't seen you for a long time my friend hope you're doing well um but yeah so every ai bot is actually created by somebody it's that's uh, the patterns written the learning is written by that person so it's essentially that person they they, they can learn your uh, your characteristics and your repetitive actions and answer back but that's about it they're not going to take over the world but Science fiction tells me that then they learn and then they program their robots to do their bidding. So it's the robots programming the robots that's going to cause the end. No, it's actually not. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I do. I do like the. Uh, I like the controversies, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm about as far from a conspiracy theorist as possible. But I do get. I do enjoy folks that uh, have a, a struggle to grasp reality sometimes. Uh, but Bubba's got an interesting question. Yeah, just it's completely off topic. But I want to. Uh, want to so yeah, Bubba, Bubba asked, do either of you use surge protection beyond general plug-in strips? Uh, when I had a DTP lab, surge protectors and battery backup were a standard. Uh, I don't really like. I, I I have a power board that has, and it's not a cheap one, but it's not uh, like super high grade either. It's about seventy dollars. It cost me. It's got eight plugs in there, and it's got the built-in surge protection. Here in Australia, we all have, uh, well, don't all, but all new houses and most older houses are retrofitted with residual current devices and uh, surge protectors as well. So I have an RCD which will cut off the power if I get too much power coming in. Um, I have uh, sorry if I have a, a ground leak or anything. I have a surge protector which stops major surges coming into my house and then I have one on my board but yeah I've never used any sort of uh, UPS or battery backup or supply mostly because I use for the last five years I've been using mobile stuff and not that it won't be damaged but uh, it's it's not the thing that I'll be halfway through a project and if my PC shuts down it's a problem now that we have Max mm, maybe we do need to worry about that we don't want to fry our Max Jade what about what about you what's your uh, experience been with uh, protecting yourself I'm pretty much exactly the same I have um, I've I only have like three outlets in this room. So I have yeah. one outlet that has um, all the main important stuff like computers and all that, that stuff that's going into a surge protector. And then it's going into a couple of power boards, which have a surge again, like I think $70 power boards. So for the main yep. stuff, and then the other ones over here are like more $40 ones, but they have the basic surge protection. I don't know. I think we're pretty lucky here in Australia with power and stuff. It's, it's not like living in Thailand or anything like that where, you know, you walk out the door and hang yourself by hanging wires um, <laughs> <laughs> and see random wires on, on the ground spinning around in flames. And uh, and we don't, you know, so I've mm. never experienced uh, losing any data or, or a, a power blackout that's created enough corruption to fuck up something like that. So... Yeah, no, likewise, and again, touch wood, because, you know, we'll have a lightning strike in a storm tomorrow, and then uh, oh, my studio will explode, but <laughs> no, it's good. To, to date, uh, it hasn't been. If you're wondering why I nerd out on electricity so much, it's because I used to work for a power company. So, I, uh, yeah, I have some experience, in, not in the technical side, but I used to sell. I used to be one of those evil people that would uh, come and not come to your house, but would uh, <laughs> tell you why you need to use my energy over someone else's, which is really difficult because if you thought, like, the difference between a Mac and a PC was hard, imagine trying to sell your electricity and gas compared to someone else's electricity and gas where there is zero difference. There is absolutely nothing. I used to I used to joke when I'd do presentations to people about energy. I said, the importance, the reason you 
you need to be nice and not be a dick to people when you work in the energy industry is that people can't see your product. People can't feel your product. They don't understand your product. So, yeah, and people don't get home at the end of a hard day and open the fridge and get it out and they go, oh, thanks. Thanks to my energy company, this beer is extra cold today. Like, they don't give a shit. So, um, yeah, and it's kind of the same in, in whatever you do. It's learnt, it's taught me uh, the value of, uh, of customer experience and of looking after people and doing the right thing by people because people will vote with their feet and uh, there is a difference. We, we know you have a choice in which live streams you watch, so we're happy that you watch Jade Star's live stream here today. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I thought you said you were coming out as a door-to-door salesman. I thought you said you were going to come out as Jehovah's Witness in your past. Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough job. That's, that's, a, tough that's job. a tough job. That, that is. That's a slippery slope. It was hard enough to convert people to using my energy. Converting people's entire <laughs> life uh, would be a, a big challenge. Like, for, yeah, for all the challenges, uh, for, for all the things I have to say about that, like i got to have respect. I, I'm never mean to anyone that does that because I'm like, this would be the crappiest job in the world and trying to do that. And I know that motives could be different and I might not agree with them, but I'm like, uh, my, my stock answer to anyone that comes to my door, whether they're selling me religion or vacuums or whatever is thanks. I'm not interested, but I hope you have a really good day and best of luck on your sales endeavors. See ya. Because like, again, you, there's no need, there's no reason, no benefit for me to tell them that I don't like what they do or yeah, I don't yeah. think they're valuable. I'm just like, not for me, thank you. And the same with those people in front of the shopping centres that uh, that try to get you to sign up to stuff. Like that, that annoys me because that's the, coming to my house is one thing, and for some reason I dislike it more when I'm out just doing my thing. Because again, as we discussed, especially at the moment, when I'm out, I'm laser focused. I'm not a I'm not a browsing kind of guy. I'm not like I'm going to go and oh I'll just wander around and see what's available. I'm like I need these four things and I go to Office Works and I want to buy these four things. If I get stopped on the way in by someone saying, "Would you like to save the whales or save the dolphins or save something else?" and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I sound like a heartless person, but I just really dislike it. It's just awkward and clunky. But again, to the same same thing, I just say to them. No thanks, but have a great day. All the best to you. Because again, there's no no need for me to make their day any worse. <laughs> it's not going to help me. Not going to help them. So, yeah. If uh, again, if you if you want to get out there and you want to be a door to door salesman, then do it. Buskers, on the other hand, I love. I will always stop and uh, and give buskers a donation because music. <laughs> we just had a so micro. I'm a basically, we just I'm had a giant. micro earthquake here. Oh, did you see my camera going? We get them all the time. Really. Yeah, they're real small ones. They just shake the house the whole. Because I'm in a three like story apartment. My apartment has a garage, second story, and then this roof, and it's really high up. And um, yeah, we get them all the time. And that we just had one then, so the whole whole apartment just shakes side to side. The camera was just shaking crazy. I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, so I'm distracted by Baba who says uh, I'd rather be an airport Krishna. At least I get a tambourine. I like that. <laughs> and Baba pointed out too. I did have a power uh, thing here on one of my shows. With a, it was when we were, I was interviewing uh, Gary. Uh, sorry, uh, right. Andy uh, and Stu. Yeah, yep. Andy and Stu, and and the stream cut out, and they got knocked offline. And but everything was still online, and then it all just came back and all started working again. So. That's how good our power is. YouTube kept going. How weird was that? That was out there. I see, um, I saw someone else here I haven't said hello to, us, uh, which is Mike Holmes. Hello, Mike Holmes. Good to see you too. And uh, Andy yes. Goldsby is here too. Yeah, um, Ed has a, a good point. He says, uh, I'm an ex-audiophile and I found that clean power sources can affect sound quality even on digital sources. So, yeah, if, if you have very, very particular ears and you hear, especially ground loops and ground hums, so if you've got dirty power or if you've got a ground loop coming into your power supply, it can affect. And I've, I've actually had folks that it, it's affected them to the point where if they have a powered hub and they plug it into AC power, the, the audio just sounds terrible. They'll plug in the microphone and it's just just that horrible ground hum and i said take it get get a powered get a portable battery and instead of plugging it into the wall plug your usb powered hub into the battery and it went away in a flash so i said you need to either always use portable power try a different power outlet or get a power conditioner for your, your power outlet um, which uh not super cheap, but you can pick them up. Um, I've never used one, to be perfectly honest, but I know folks who have and who swear by them. But yeah, again, I, I may wait till I get a problem and then find a thing to fix it. I'm not really a person that's like, oh, so I'm going to go out and try and uh, try and clean up my audio anymore because again, I'm I'm not experiencing it. But again, that's probably better luck as opposed to better judgment on my behalf. And uh, Mark says, I spent some time selling vacuum cleaners door to door. It's the only item you can sell when you say it sucks. It's actually good. 
But um, gee, I actually I did um, door-to-door sales of um, roofing. Now, if you want to know the worst job in the world, roofing is it. You know why? It's not that it's just a hard slog. The thing is, you're you're rolling up to somebody's house, knocking on the door, and going, "Hey, I noticed your roof sucks." Yep. You're not getting off on the best foot. You're telling them, "Hey, where you live is a shithole," and I just thought I'd come and tell you and offer you this, this, and. And it's going to be a bad job where they're going to, hey, you're going to have people on your roof for days and days and it's going to stress you out and it's not really going to look much better. And we're probably going to run away with your money. Yeah, well, put a sign in your front yard and say, roof still came and did this roof. (laughs) Because apparently that's part of the deal with all those roofing companies. No, we we had exactly that happen at the place I used to live in. Um, Yeah, someone rolled up and said, it's like, oh, look at, look at, your roof is covered in moss and and, uh, it looks crappy and look what we can make it look like and shows a picture and I'm like, I like the mossy roof look. Yeah. Oh, like you can piss off now, please. Uh, that was nicer than that. But yeah, it, it is weird. It would be a, a hard sell. And I guess the vacuum cleaner would be kind of the same. As you walk in there like, you look like a filthy troll who can't clean your own floors. Uh, here, have this vacuum. It's better. It's better for idiots like you that apparently can't keep their own houses clean. So it, it's weird. And it's it's the weird stuff that gets sold door to door. Insurance, like, again, I, 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 when I went to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a deep cut there's, uh, there's 20 and 30 year olds watching Jay that are just like what's what are they? is that like a Wikipedia like yeah it's, it's a book version of Wikipedia <laughs> oh, <so old. laughs> oh mate uh, we, we had we had the Britannica it was a, there was a big uh, challenge there was the world book and then there was the Encyclopedia Britannica so you know it was kind of like warring gangs at one point where it was like are you a world book encyclopedia or you are a Britannica family and uh, yeah we were Britannica you were Britannica so, too yeah God, people are so... Pr- can you believe that? Here we are. We live in an age where we have all this amazing technology. We have computers in our pockets. And back then when I was a kid, families used to be so proud of their encyclopedia collection. They got duped to buy from a door-to-door salesperson. And there'd be a section in the lounge room with the, the little thing and they'd all be stacked in there and, and people would come in. Oh, is that your encyclopedia collection? Oh, yes, there it is. Oh, I love it. You know, <laughs> Man, I, the world's I, changed. It, it, just to be, I did, I did love that, again, for, for younger folks, you won't actually even appreciate this, but obviously stuff happens. So encyclopedias are a point in time. There ain't nobody going in there updating the Wikipedia page when someone dies or when a new technology is invented or something happens in the world. So every year you get a yearbook. So you'd have your encyclopedia and then you get a yearbook. So the weird thing was if you were researching something, you had to work out, do I think anything has happened in the last 10 years about this? And what year approximately do I think that might have happened? And then go to the world, go to the the yearbook and try and find some information. Otherwise, you'd just be like, you know, countries have changed names. You're like, oh yeah, the the city of Tehran uh, was uh, was was a great place. And then you're like, oh wait, the Iraq War happened, and now we call it Baghdad and all these other things. So it, it was it was a hard life. Like and and yeah, you couldn't just go online and find someone else's essay and plagiarize it. You had to like go out and physically find someone else's work to copy. You couldn't just go online and get someone's work to copy. So yeah. we had it rough back in the day, got to say. Yeah, um, uh, and so I'll answer this question in a, in a second, but uh, this is just odd about encyclopedias. I remember so being a kid and like, you know, from the longest time I knew I was trans, okay? And before I even knew what that meant, there was something different about me. From like five years old, it was, you know, this it wasn't anything new that happened. And I yep. remember, because g- there was no internet, you know? There was no way to find out. And I remember looking in the encyclopedia and finding the word transsexual in there and it said i never forget it a fetish of somebody who likes to wear the opposite person's clothing and forever and a day it fucking stuck in my head that and then i had to go and look up fetish in the dictionary and that just put in like like a sick disorder that like you were addicted to something like you know that you couldn't shake and it, it was one of the things that stayed in my head for the longest time that stopped me from transitioning and, you know, created a psychological bar- barrier for me to actually eventually be who I knew I always was. So, and then when I found the internet, <laughs> what was it? I got my first computer and logged on and went, Ooh. oh my God, they're everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I have other people. It was like, fuck you, Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Rot in hell. 
and I think the, the the point out of that is, and this is where I think people trip up even today, is that we forget that the encyclopedia is one person's opinion at the end of the day. It's yeah. written by people. Humans create all this stuff. So, you know, for, for, for all the, the talk of fake news and all this sort of stuff, like I don't I don't get down on that, but I do believe that there is no – like the only fact is what you see, feel, hear, touch, experience yourself – Everything else that you see and hear and other people report to you through any media is down to interpretation. And you can you only have to watch like three different news, uh, news outlets run by three different media companies to get three very different takes on the exact same thing that could have happened. So fact, fact isn't fact and it's always just written and therefore manipulated by humans. And I don't even know, I'm not going to go into conspiracy mode, but I don't know who owned Encyclopedia Britannica, but I bet it was some big rich company uh, with some dude at the top that was just like, (laughs) make it say this, because I feel this way. And the underlings would have gone, yes, sir, of course we will. And we'll we'll say these are bad and these are good. And again, it's all down to opinion. Someone should write a song about opinions. Hmm, Maybe Mm. I'll do that. And that really goes into our next topic really well, which is going to be yeah. expert opinions. Well, Daniel, you've segued well, hey. naturally, but I will go back and just answer a question because uh, yeah. there's a question thrown at me is by Danny Broderick. What okay. iPad generation do I use? I am using the iPad Pro 2019 and I have an iPad 2010. 17 over on my bed and I have a iPad mini third generation sitting here as well. So there are all my iPads that I have. Oh, yes. Too many iPads. of them. No. It's, <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, two do, do, you, do you ever look around and feel a little bit ashamed of how much stuff you're surrounded by? I, I have, I have those guilt trips from time to time where I just look at all the things and then I'll, I'll read a comment on one of my videos. I was saying this to a mate yesterday and they're just like, I dream of the day where I get an iPad. I'm just like, shit, like, that, that just makes me feel really rotten that I'm sitting here with three iPads, one of which I barely use. Uh, and yeah, and to be honest, that's why I've started either selling my gear at like a, on eBay at 99 cents, um, mud, like what is that thing called? Reserve price and or, or just giving some of this stuff away because yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling the guilt too much. Um, and because people look to me for an expert opinion, I don't know what did they? Okay. Uh, I feel like I need to get this stuff in and then I use it and then it sits on the shelf. So uh, I need to get better at that. But um, yeah, so cue, cue like the, the cues of people now emailing me saying, Pete, I'll have this and then I'll have your mini <laughs> keyboard and then I'll take your uh, I'll take your mixer off your hands. But uh, yeah, in, in all honesty, it, it does make me feel a bit bad. But then I think, um, yeah, I, I, you do have to look after yourself and, and self-care is super important. And like uh, I don't begrudge anyone for for doing for being passionate about something and and spending their time and their money and their energy on something that they really enjoy because there are people with with that collect other things that invest in other things that buy other things that make them feel good and make them happy. I'm not saying material items should do that, but I'm also saying that uh, I need to judge myself less and I need to judge other people because if you're hardcore into coin collecting and you've got a giant coin collection, I could look at that and go, isn't that a waste of time, money, energy? Or yeah. I could say way to be passionate about something that you really dig you go you do you so i don't know i, I just said that because sometimes i do look around and go yeah makes me feel bad um but then i think oh but then it just it, it re-energizes me to ensure that i'm giving back uh through what i do with the gear i have and through through things like this and through creating videos and content so there you go well, um i was watching a conspiracy video last week and it was uh, the guy was saying that um uh, so the devil's taking over the world and how he's getting to us is by giving us all these devices which are essentially scrying mirrors uh, so the old witchcraft mirrors and yep. with the black screens and eventually when it all goes to shit all these <laughs> demons are going to come out of these black screens that we all own because they're all around us and take uh-huh. and, I, and I just stopped the video and then looked around my room going black screen black Yours. screen I'm in a circle of black screens going well I'm fucked <laughs> I just better like take me now whatever <laughs> good time but, but yeah that, that is weird. I'll, I'll, I'll say this thing and then we'll talk about opinions. But yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's semi-related. But I just had a weird flashback, like you do. Um, but I, I used to be, I used to have a Commodore sixty-four computer, and it was in my room. And we're talking probably late eighties to early nineties. And I would have this recurring day daydream slash nightmare that it would become sentient, and that a face would come on the screen, and that it would start talking to me, and then I would just like 
freak out. I mean, cue, cue the internet and now that yeah. absolutely happens. And I'm doing that right now. I'm talking to a face of a disembodied human in another part of the world. But yeah. I thought it would come alive and start talking to me to the point where I was so terrified of this that at night I unplugged all the cables and I turned the screen around to face the other way in case I woke up in the middle of the night. <laughs> at least if it was going to try and talk to me, I wouldn't be able to see its creepy robot face on my monitor so yeah uh that explains a lot about some of my uh my my in- eccentricities these days <laughs> expert opinions now <laughs> i'm gonna i'll start this off so i mentioned this on my patreon live stream yesterday because i can be a bit more freer i think with my words there so if you're not a patreon member you can come over and join for as little as a dollar a day and um most days you're going to get a really long live stream or like something interesting happening there i'm seeing so and it was about this the max the new mac m1s and the mac minis and the airs and everything so look let's and I, there's a lot of experts out there who got their review units and you said this in your video they, they, a lot of them are going to be very favorable in the beginning and then you're going to have a lot of people who are going to come out and shit all over everything mm-hmm. um, and then you're going to come out then there's going to be a lot of people who create a lot of fucking clickbait nonsense right who uh, have a massive audience and uh, yep. put things like in their actual title I'm an expert and how do you discern between somebody who's actually like thinking about you, somebody who's thinking about themselves or somebody that actually really does have knowledge or someone like me who's like just making mistakes and plodding my way through. But at the end of the day, trying to lift, you know, how, how do you um, find uh, an expert or somebody that you trust it, it, it's a tough one, and I was talking about this exact topic again with with the same mate I caught up with yesterday, and I've gone on a bit of down a bit of a rabbit hole of the whole fake guru culture and these people that are the experts, the whole fake it till you make it crew, and it can be really tough. And I, I do I do feel genuinely sorry for folks because I think it's easy to get caught up in the hype, it's easy to get sucked into the world and think, hey, I'm I'm after this thing, this person's promising me all these things. Uh, I'm going to take the plunge and go in and do it. And unfortunately, there's the copycat culture that happens after that, that people, it works for some people. Like it actually, it, it works to create these courses and sell them for $297 and do these webinars and, and tell people that they're the experts. And then they're not actually really delivering on anything. And the one thing that I say is look past the what they're saying and look at what they're doing. So mm-hmm. for music in particular, I think this is super important. And every time I get a comment on a group, on a forum, on a on a video, and it's someone that's just like, I've been a recording engineer for 20 <laughs> years. You can't create anything in GarageBand. You don't know what you're talking about. I use a $4,000 SSL console to create my music. I'm like, more power to you, buddy. Yeah. Are you happy? Are you creating music that you want? And nine... Point nine times out of 10, when I go to their website, when I go to their Facebook profile, when I go to their YouTube page, they're not doing anything. They're not creating anything. They're not sharing anything. There is nothing there. All they're sharing is lead funnels, uh, sales magnets, all of these things that are just funneling people into buying their courses, but they're not actually producing any valuable content that's showing what they can do or that's sharing their their love of music. So I think, and look, if I, I don't begrudge anyone. Like, let's be really clear on this. I now make a living from what I do, which mm-hmm. is talking about music on the internet. But, and I don't begrudge anyone from doing that. You may see a Pete John's GarageBand course come out and I may be, be promoting that because that makes sense to do. But what I don't like is some of the ways that people profess to be gurus, profess to be absolute experts in things, and you can tell that they're spending 95% of their time on the business side, on how to sell their expertise, and only 5% of time on actually maintaining their knowledge and making sure they actually are an expert. So, yeah, I say all that to say, look at not what people say, don't look at what the flashiness is on their website or on their latest promotion, Look underneath that at what they're actually doing and what they're actually producing. But what do you think? Sound, sound advice. Yeah, um, I'm exactly the same. The first thing I normally do when I come across a, a new content creator, I come across a video and I click on it. Hey, if I like the video, I'm, I'm more than likely going to subscribe. Um, but I'm going to go on. The description is normally the second place I'll go to uh, just to see what their links are, if they're linking to anything that they 
create around the topic that they're talking about. Like, hey, I'm a, I'm an audio engineer. Great, yep. you must be audio engineering something. And if there's <laughs> fucking nothing there, you know what? I'm not really interested. I want to like, yeah, exactly. I want to see what you're doing. I want to, uh, even if it's something small, you know, uh, it's really important. I'll give an example of what got me my, me really riled up because this will lead into our next subject. So, as we said, all these Mac, um, Mac Mini and, and new I, um, Macs that have come out, there's lots of favorable reviews about them. So, y- yesterday, I saw a review from this guy in his title of his, the actual name of his channel was um, uh, Technology Expert. I, I can't remember exactly what, it was, exactly what it was, but it had the word expert. And I'm like, here we go. And he was Australian. And um, he, his whole concept of the video was, I own an $8,000 MacBook Pro with 64 gigabytes of RAM and it's an incredible machine. And I went out and bought the base model Mac Mini to replace it. And you know what? It didn't. And he threw a fucking tantrum in the video and was like, I'm sending it back. And I'm so angry that, you know, they could sell me something that's like not even a quarter of the price of the piece of kit I have back here that already does everything for me. And the whole concept of the video was, don't buy this thing. And And there was no, there was absolutely no explanation of, hey, but it could work for you. It's depending on your needs and what you actually do. It's just this so far extreme and, and the the anger I had inside of me because I could just see people clicking this and going, oh, he must be an expert. It says it in his name. You know? And these kind of people, I, I don't get the bitterness either. It's, it just is such a waste of time. So... Yeah, the, uh, the, the amount of, again, the amount of energy that goes into this stuff. But again, uh, it, it all comes back to consumer. And my, Mike Holmes made a, a good point here, which is that this isn't just, you know, your, your, your entrepreneurs, your fake gurus, your creators that are doing it. Big companies are doing exactly the same thing. And I've said for the longest time, if the product is free, you are the product. Yeah. So if, if you're watching, if, you, if you're doing something for free, like right now, you'll, you'll be watching YouTube, you might go over to Facebook, you might go to Instagram. You are using all these things for free but you're doing so for free because that company is making money by mining your data and using that for other purposes, such as advertising to you. So advertising companies pay platforms, platforms push content out to you, you are the product. So it is important to know that. And yeah, the working for a big company, and it's interesting, I'm reflecting very heavily on moving from the corporate world to the entrepreneurial world. And there's a lot of similarities but there's also a lot of differences, which yeah, we can we can rant about uh, uh, later at another time. But yeah, you're, you're right that when I was working for big companies and when I see what big companies do, these offers are like new customers only. Like the, the phrase new customers only pisses me off more than anything else because what you're saying there is we it's only sexy if we can acquire new customers. Customer acquisition is what we want and we're just going to look at the cost to acquire and then acquire as many new customers as we want. Forgetting the lifetime value, forgetting the brand reputation, forgetting the fact that when people leave because they're pissed off because you didn't support them or you didn't deliver on what you said, that that creates a negative perception. So I think it's 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 valid that it's just as it's just as Sarah Sarah knew in his ears. It's just it's the the fake gurus are standing in front of their Lamborghinis in front. I saw the funniest one the other day. It was a dude laying on top of a Lamborghini in front of a private jet. And I'm like, is this actually real or is this like a piss take on what? And I I looked at the content. I'm like, this is legitimately real. This is someone that thinks that I should be impressed and think that they're an expert in whatever they're trying to sell me because they're laying on a Lamborghini in front of a private jet. I, I, I don't get it. So, yeah, again, you, you will be the pro- – every time you give away your email address to anyone for any reason, you are the product. And because I have a, a mailing list and I collect people's email addresses, I treat that with respect because yeah. – Hey, you're letting me into your world and uh, I hope that if I mess up and I do something wrong, just like I would for any other company or anyone else that puts you into their sales funnel, that puts you into their click funnel, that uses their lead magnet, and we've all been in them. You sign up on day one. Day two, you get, hey, it's uh, it's actually the person Hello. here. It's your automated robot. And then day three, it's like, i got a great product for you. Like, here comes the product pitch. Yeah. It's, it's only $297. Day five. We noticed that you haven't accepted our great offer. What if we do it for $97 and we throw in these three bonuses? You're like, not interested. It's day seven. It's now $47. Like, 
every company yeah. and every person is doing this. You just need to be aware of it. Like, I don't get angry about it anymore, or at least I am right now. But I usually <laughs> don't get angry. But I, what I get angry about is when people don't realize that's what's happening. So if, if you do want to go down that track, you do want to support someone, and you like what they do and you get value out of it, more power to you. There's people like Joe Gilder out there. There's people like Patrick Baird out there that are selling courses, that are doing the right thing, that are treating their customers well. And again, they're producing stuff. Look underneath and you see that they're producing real stuff. But I know I, get, I went off on weird tangents there, but that's the whole point of the rant. Exactly. And um, but back to the Mac M1 stuff, yeah. It, it's been an absolute kind of tire fire in terms of everyone's wanted to jump on the bandwagon. Look, I have too, but I hopefully what you and I are sharing is, hey, where does people, we're going to use this, we're going to tell you what to know if this is good, bad, or otherwise, and then it'll help you make up your own mind. But going in with a with a clickbait title that's going to get the blood boiling and get people to go in, I, I'm actually the opposite now. The more, I, the more a title makes me want to click a video, the less likely. Yesterday, someone had a video and it just had like, um, I've been thinking, and it was like the dot, dot, dot. I'm just like... <laughs> Oh, I wonder what they're thinking about. And then I'm like, actually, I don't care. See yeah. ya, next next video. It's like, tell me what you're thinking about. I've been thinking about whether Spotify will go out of business. Like, there, okay, cool. I will watch that. But I've been thinking dot, dot, dot. It's like, ooh, I wonder what they're thinking about. I'll click the button. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. So, sorry. <laughs> I, I see that and think, wow, aren't we all just thinking? You're not special, honey. <laughs> uh, I should say hello to a few more people who've uh, joined the chat. Middlehead Hippie, I saw you in the chat as well. Um, so welcome as well, Sarah, Sarah Newen, who has a fantastic channel. There's a, a content creator who has a lot of value who I watch every video of because she's down to earth and real. And, um, you just feel good after watching her shows and you feel a little bit more uh, educated. There's, mm. an, there's always more options. So I love her videos as well. Jasmine Walsh is over on Facebook. Hello to you. Welcome along. And I saw someone else pop in here, which uh, 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 Langston Reese. Hello, Langston. Good to see you too. So let's let's. Uh, I'll finish. I just want to finish on the expert opinion. So what I do is I normally create a. This is weird. I do go and I'll, I'll look for a particular topic of somebody who does something like technology. I'll I'll find a whole bunch of them, subscribe to them, and over the next week organize them in my in a playlist that so and then i can see what they're producing and then i start cutting them out mm. <laughs> whoever's got crap whoever starts to get a bit off the rails and then i cut them down and end up with something good out of that that's one thing i do but i and I, another thing i do is i don't watch my own videos <laughs> because <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> uh, it, it can be rough. Like, yeah, what, watching yourself back, it's, it's taken a long time to get, to get used to my own voice, let alone my own mug on uh, on screen and some of the things that go wrong, especially live stream, some of the things that go wrong. Like, it's bad enough in the moment, like you're watching it back again. And it's like, oh, it's a cringe fest. But, I love uh, the mistakes. Oh, excellent. You, get, yeah. know, you talk about this all the time, but yeah, you do You do have to make mistakes. Mistakes do actually make you better. Um, and uh, I love that uh, clearly Epic, out of, out of my entire rant there, he's like, is Spotify going out of business? Uh, no, no that, that was just a an example. I don't think <laughs> I it think was even good. Spotify, but probably. Um, yeah, we can talk about Spotify. Well, maybe next rant, but um, yeah, just really quickly, Spotify, there's a big thing going at the moment where creators and artists are asking Spotify to pay them basically 10 times as much for their streams. They want one cent per stream, not the point one that they're getting at the moment. And uh, the reality of that is that Spotify is still not actually profitable. They're still not actually making money. They're in a growth stage at the moment. They're paying people like Joe Rogan millions of dollars to yeah. have exclusive rights to his podcast. They're trying to build up. And because there's so many competitors now, they're battling it out with, YouTube Music and Apple Music and Tidal and Napster and all these people, it's it's diluting the marketplace. So I think we mentioned it last on the last round. You can get your 60 million songs anywhere, and it's kind of like the power and gas thing again. Whether you do it through Spotify or Apple Music or YouTube Music really doesn't matter. And we're not going to see growth in the amount paid to artists for music. As depressing and sad as that may be, it's just not going to happen. And the reason it's not is all the way back. It, it circles right back around to the consumer. Because you and I want to pay our $10 a month. If you said to us, uh, we're going to pay the artist fairly, so we're going to give the artist 10 more times, your Spotify is now $100 per month so that we can have enough revenue to pay all the artists whose music that you listen to, your membership base will drop by about 90% because no one wants to pay for the support, but the artists want it. And everyone in theory wants to support the artists 
and they don't want the big companies. But again, while the big companies are spending money on promotion, on advertising, on Joe Rogan, then they're not going to have the money to pay their creators. What you think, whether any of that is good, bad or otherwise is almost irrelevant. Um, but big companies are going to be big companies. They always have been and they always will be. They'll always put uh, bottom line, profit, shareholder value above a lot of other things. And that, that that's the reality. I, I get angry about it sometimes. I get angry that Apple's a billion dollar company and some of the things that they do piss me off. And then I think, well, what? I, I have a choice. I have a choice of what I use and what I do. And I also have a choice of how angry I get about things and uh, whether I just get on with it and create and do my thing anyway. Yep, the anger's not worth it. Um, I just, uh, so Russ has written here, mistakes make you better. Should be a new T-shirt, uh, Pete. Now, it, it can't be because it's the logo of, it's the saying of my show and I've already started making them, Russ. I was going to release yeah. them in a week. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm so I'm so unoriginal. I've, I have two T-shirts available. One has my Studio Live Today logo on it, and the other one has this one, which is the Garage Band users. And Ron Ward actually designed this one. So shout out to my buddy Ron over on GBU. But no, I I have thought about that not not stealing Jade's ideas, but of of doing more music related stuff. And I think I'm actually I've noticed that on Teespring they have masks now, and yeah. because uh, South Australia recently had a three day lockdown, I know it sounds as weird as it was. Um, so we had a mini lockdown because because someone stuffed up uh, that yeah getting some studio live today masks in it's got to be my next step so uh, yeah watch out watch out for that because uh, you know got to cash in got to cash in on this pandemic people I've, I've got some dread circus masks on my store and some methiest ones I've had them for a while I think I've sold three um, I just metalhead hippie says uh, most of my live streams are a wreck and I'm okay with that I watch back to see where I messed up and where I can better the show and I've been watching metalhead hippies uh, stream for the last two weeks nearly every one of them and i i almost make the four hour streams you know i i get there i have to have a meal sometimes in between i don't know how you do it metalhead hippie no. but you know i wouldn't change a thing i love the whole you know i love it when you forget to turn on the mic i love that stuff because i do that as well and you know again that's i think that's the thing as a content creator that people can really hopefully identify with and go oh my god i would do that too and it's not like you're intentionally trying to be a bumbling fool but yeah. we we are all bumbling fools we're all bumbling our way through life and i think that's another thing that i look for in a content creator somebody who i'm yeah. like oh my god this this so-called expert who doesn't have it in their title just fucked up monumentally and they just carried on that's a wonderful thing can i, I just want to touch on spotify too Mm. Just get, getting back to that. So I have this thing I do when I normally do this show and interview someone each week where at the end of the show, after I've interviewed them, I leave their music playing on Apple Music for 24 hours, all their songs on repeat as a like a kind of payment thing. And the joke is I'll message them the day after and go, hey, next time you check your distro kit, <laughs> you might see a spike from Melbourne. And, uh, and normally <laughs> it turns out to be between 300 to 400 streams. So that's a lot to see on your thing. It actually works out to be 19 cents. <laughs> but I know it all sounds bleak. The, the point I want to make here is is it really that bleak? Because the record industry before streaming was actually pretty bad itself. I remember yeah. Faith No More touring here in, uh, for the Angel Dust tour back uh, 92 or 3 it was. And I, was, I got to interview Mike Patton and hang out with the band. And we went to their after party and stuff. And um, they were saying, like, you know, they had Easy was their, their single at the moment. You know, it was everywhere. They had their single on their first album and done done really well with uh, Epic. And they were saying to me that, you know, hey, you may think it's glamorous. We are having these number one singles and stuff. We're struggling to eat. And here they are in Melbourne from the US just doing like all these sellout shows. Mm. And big bands like that are struggling to eat. So it's yeah. always kind of been like that. It's it's a really good point, and if you want if you want next if you want to find out exactly what it's all about, uh, search for a documentary called The Boy Band Con. It's about uh, NSYNC back Great in film. the nineties, early two thousands. 
really, really good. It shows the absolute detail of what goes on behind the scenes of the music industry. And the thing is, nothing much has changed. And Mike Holmes made a good point which uh, here, which is that um, yeah, different different content has different levels of value. And it's absolutely true that it, it all comes down to the consumer. At the end of the day, everything is consumer driven. Everything is what the consumers want. And then whatever the consumers want, the producers will produce and it usually flows to the top. So if you look at the band or you look at the creator, Folks like Joe Rogan, like I'm, I'm not a Joe Rogan fan, but I respect him because he went out and the same with like Renee Ritchie. Let's bring it back to the technology and, 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 and like music stuff. Renee Ritchie and Brian Tong were two dudes that worked for big tech companies and they would have get paid a salary. They were probably making, you know, 100K a year to talk about tech and to be to report on tech and do their thing. They've gone out and done independent stuff. People are digging their content, they're joining their tribe, they're following them online, and because they're just delivering real-world information that people are finding useful, they're becoming popular and successful. So they are more likely to be able to make a living doing what they're doing because they're providing high-quality, valuable content. So that's, I think, the thing to think about. And, and to your point on the whole, is the music industry any different? It really isn't because the, the only difference is, the only thing that I hear from folks is that the big record companies and producers were paying folks to record. So if you're a recording yeah. engineer or a mixer or a mastering engineer, you were getting these big fat checks because the record companies wanted to get the best quality product to push out to the consumers. But the middle person, the artist, was usually the one getting the biggest shaft out of all of it because they were getting all of these big... And again, you're giving... a 20-year-old rapper or a 25-year-old rock band member, you're giving them these big advances. You're saying, here's 10,000 bucks. Go out and, and have fun and party. And they do, but they don't realize that the contract they signed, every little bit of money, they're actually spending their own money. And it's worse than that. They're spending an advance on the money that they may make once they've paid back all of the loan, once they've actually started making anything. And then they may be after agent fees and after all the cost, maybe making 15% on the actual money that's going into the band. So... If anything, every time I think bad and every time I feel bad about the music industry and how it's changed and how it's different, I actually get super happy about it because I think never before have artists and creators and even the smart recording engineers and mixing engineers and mastering engineers have realized, they've seen the writing on the wall. They've realized that the big fat checks from the big record companies aren't coming anymore, but they're reaching out and they're showing other people how to do it. They're working with independent creators. They're sharing their skills and talent and passion and that's actually benefiting and helping them out. Whereas the ones that are not are the ones that are sitting there with their feet, their head buried in the sand, their feet cemented to the ground going, I don't like this because things are changing. Things are going to change. Things yep. will always change. It's how you embrace that. And it's actually your character and how successful you are is usually more based upon how you react when things go to shit than yep. it is when things go well. Anyone can just reap and all the good benefits of when they're in an industry that's popping and when there's a lot of money in what they're doing. The harder thing to do is when it all goes, when it has a big giant left turn or right turn, whether you follow that or you don't can be the difference between whether you succeed or fa fail. And again, the way you do succeed is by trying different things. Like you, yeah. a year ago, you weren't doing a daily show about apps. Now you are and you found your success with that. That's a good thing. But if you didn't try that, you could have been banging your head against a wall right now thinking, why Why can't I get paid to go play live shows? Why can't I get paid to record albums? What, what, what's going on with this? You embraced it. You went, it's changed. It's different. What can I do about it? I'm going to take control. Yeah, I had no choice, really. The, the world locked down. The world gave us the choice. And, you know, it's exactly what you said. I agree totally. It's how you move with the times. And, you know, we, we've all met that person, you know, who turns around and goes, oh, you can't make music on a phone. What are you, mental? It's <laughs> like, how are you doing in your little studio there? <laughs> okay. And who's paying the bills? Nobody. You know, and I remember back in the day when I was young, like I've had a, I've had a few small record deals in the past with bands like they were called record deals back then and people used to get so excited about a record deal and Ooh. i learned very quickly a record deal is like the bottom of the pile that you can get Ooh. in the music industry what you what you really wanted was a publishing deal that was the thing that gets you made money a record deal is essentially hey uh, if you remember some like shock records here in australia hey we're uh, shock records we're going to give you a record deal here's some money to go and record again like you said they pay for the recording they virtually own the recording because nearly everybody who signs a contract 
doesn't really read it, doesn't understand what they're signing. And so they end up getting shafted the whole way through. They make no money. Sure, some of them might have success and the album goes somewhere, but the only people who make money out of it are the producer, the people who record it and the label normally loses money anyway. So if you are a really uh, an artist that somebody wants to invest in, they're going to give you a publishing deal. That is how you know that there's, there's some serious money to be made. And a record deal is kind of like, this is my opinion, of course, like everything else. Right. To me is, we're going to offer you a record deal, meaning we're not really sure about you. You could be a one-hit wonder, one album wonder. You could flail in the in the water and sink completely. But a publishing deal is saying, like, we know we want it. This has to be published and, and, and made a, a concrete thing. So... Um, yeah, so it's true, and, and and that point is the super valid one. Is that the the one percent, the ninety nine percent are paying for the one percent. So every for every band that puts out a record, that puts out an album, that has a record deal, there's going to be like nineteen of one that's successful. There's ninety nine others that are unsuccessful that are actually paying because the record companies need to make a net profit. So they need to profit, and it costs money to put records out. And if they don't sell, and if the artist isn't popular they're going to make a loss. So yes, the artist pays for some of that, but so does the record company. So like most things in the world and most things in life, uh, there is this concept of the 1%, which is that uh, you know, the, the, the 1% are the ones that are successful and that are popular, and then the 99% are the ones that are not, and they have to pay for it. And I think the beauty of independent, I know, and again, absolutely, we should have said this right at the start, but obviously all of these are our opinions, yeah. and I respect, I respect your opinion. If you want to think the exact opposite of me and you want to put it out there in a nice way and you're going to be respectful about it, more power to you. Like, absolutely, I love hearing other people's opinions on things, despite the fact that I have songs where I say I don't like people's opinions. I actually do. What I don't like is where people have an opinion simply based on what other people have said. They just parrot it and they follow along without doing their own research or they belittle or bring down others and tell people they can't do things the way they want to because it's wrong or it's it's not the right way to do things like that's that's the stuff i get super passionate about so you do you if you if you want to do whatever you want to do if you want to think whatever you want to think as long as you're not hurting anyone else and as long as you're not stopping anyone else from doing and thinking what they want to think then go your hardest yeah and and the only the main opinion i try to sell all the time is like and just on this music industry thing is and we talk about it now all the time. There's probably another T-shirt I want to do called Viva La Revolution because, you know, there is a home re studio recording revolution going on. There are independent artists coming out of the woodwork, uh, places like DistroKid, you know, who are you, you have, is tied up with, with sponsorship at the moment. They're clearly seeing it. That's why, you know, they've got interest in someone like you because they've seen an upsurge they are the people on the front line now in the record in the music industry seeing that right so there is a revolution happening and we are the part of that and we have the power to be the change that we want to see mm. and 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 we can create a music industry from the ground up it, it's it's happening regardless of if you think it is or isn't it actually yeah. is no matter how small or how large it's it's actually going on so from that i want to ask how do we deal with imposter syndrome amongst all of this? <laughs> yeah, our, our old friend imposter syndrome mm. is is rough um, and, and it is hard. And I, I still get it on the daily. Um, there are still times where I, I sit down and I'll do a show like this and I'll finish up and then I'll come offline and I'm like, who the fuck am I <laughs> to tell other people what they should do or to give my opinion or to say that I can know how to do things? Like there are so many people that are so much more blah, 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 all that stuff. And then, you know, obviously I have a talking to myself and I, I give advice about this stuff, but, you know, it's easy to give advice. It's often hard to take it, especially your own advice sometimes. So I try to say I need to do what I tell other people to do, which is to realize that it actually doesn't matter. You, you are going to have something valuable to say and you are going to have some value to add to the right people. And that's the thing. When I realized that, when I first started doing this, I thought, I don't actually even know this stuff. I'm not a professional trained audio engineer. I am not even professionally trained musician. Why, what, what right do I have to tell other people what to do and how to do it? And then I realized, there was a couple of things I realized, which was number one is that sometimes, most of the time, it's more powerful to learn something from someone who has just learned it. Like it's, it's, it's actually yeah. super relevant because people who are further progressed and it's why some of the best coaches aren't the best players in sport is the people that are the super high end athletes 
they often don't understand the struggles. They don't understand how, how it is to not know stuff. They don't understand how it is to be completely clueless. And the reason that I bought a Mac and that I'm putting myself out there and people seem to be enjoying watching me bumbling around on my new Mac is that I don't know this stuff, but I'm going to learn it. And if you don't know it, I think people feel better about learning stuff from people that aren't necessarily the experts as we talk about uh, there. So that's sort of one side of it. The other side of imposter syndrome is, yeah, realizing that, that there is going to be the people, like we, again, because we live in the future, there's people that want to hear what you have to say and that are going to be interested in your way of positioning it. Like you can you can watch anything right now on the internet, but if you're choosing to watch Jade and I rant about stuff, it's because there's something about us, there's something about the way we approach things, there's something about the way that we conduct ourselves that you think is fun, interesting, educational, whatever it happens to be. And every single one of you has that same power. It may not be the same audience, the same tribe, the same crowd, but every single person has the ability to do that. And the only people that I, I really, I, I feel bad because the, the final thing I'll say on this and then I'll, I'll, I want your opinion on it, but is I think we, we think other people think about us way more than they actually do. And it's, it's both, yeah both a bit sad but also super duper liberating is that other people generally have their own shit to deal with so they're they're going through all their stuff and if you think i'm putting this out there everyone is judging me there's like five percent of people that are judging you and they're the trolls on the internet the strangers that you shouldn't care about the 95 percent of people probably 90 percent of them are just going oh pete did a thing that's cool and then 5% are going to be totally into it and and going to really embrace it and enjoy it so if you're sitting around worried about the five percent of people that you don't know that you don't like you don't care about then you're wasting your time and that's that's my view on imposter syndrome these days is that yeah it's it's worrying about people that aren't even caring about you and you're spending your time on something that's not adding any value to anyone totally and you know the the other thing um is you're not alone that's the most important thing mm -hmm. and and the the best of the best of the best of the best are suffering from it exactly at this very moment or in the next 10 minutes or an hour from now and you know what they'll get over it it's like um look we've all got that inside voice that tells us great things we've all got that inside voice that tells <laughs> us shit things but one of the most important voices that we have that a lot of us don't listen to enough is the voice that's actually coming out of our mouth every day and yep. um so i'm going to go on a mini rant here about friends and stuff so uh, it's tied into social media. So we live in a world now like with Facebook where everything's based on friends and collecting friends. The whole word friendship and friends is fucked. It's gone. It's just been decimated by this one social media platform, right? Because a real friend, right, which you can always only count on a hand normally or, or if you're lucky too like right? you're a very lucky person hey if you've got three close friends that you can always count on your life is amazing you that's better than any gear you can own or anything like that but um and a, a really quality friend in my opinion is the friend that listens to the words that actually come out of your mouth and that friend picks up on them and says do you know what? You say that all the time. You should, and, and, and brings it to your attention because that's what a psychiatrist or a psychologist does. You sit there and said, you flick the money and they take a few months to just tell you exactly back what you've been saying to them because we don't listen to our voice, the voice that comes out. We listen too much to the inside and sometimes the inside's okay and it can be great, but most of the time it's that inside voice that's, that, that's, the opposite to what's coming out of your mouth. So, you know, surrounding yourself with good friends who will hear when you're saying, I'm shit, I'm shit, I suck, I suck, and saying, you know what? You suck because you keep saying this, you keep doing it. They're your best friends, you know, and, and, yep. and you've got to value that stuff because that's your, your inside voice that you... It, you don't have that um in, sorry when you're having that inside voice moment there isn't yeah. that friend inside your head to point that out all the time so that's a a first thing and as i said at the beginning of this imposter syndrome is a good thing it's like anxiety and nerves right mm. uh, we, we live in a world at the moment where like um i think anxiety and, and nerves and depression are all looked a little bit like oh it's the end of the world but mm. 
if you look at some of the best artists in the world, like look, think about someone like David Bowie, rest his soul, is not here with us anymore. Any great artist, they suffer from anxiety, no matter how long they've been doing it before they go on. And you know what? Some of the best performances of their life came from those nerves and anxiety. And I'm like, oh shit, am I this good? Can I do it? Because those things are meant to be there to drive you. So when you can embrace that imposter syndrome and go, you know what? I'm glad that's there to remind me that I am an imposter. And that's uh, just to finish on this rant. I had a comment this week on one of my videos saying, you should actually learn about the app before you give a tutorial on it. And I went back and watched the video. And at the beginning of the video, like all my videos, I try to make the point, I haven't actually really looked at this app. So I'm <laughs> learning with all of you. That's yep. the fucking point. I'm not doing another tutorial of going, and this button's over here. There are plenty of people who do that. I'm not knocking that. My yeah. thing is, I want you to learn with me and make the mistakes with me. So hopefully Ooh. you don't have to. That's the point. So, But I'm exactly the same as you, Pete. I, I get off here and just go, why the fuck are people listening to me? I just, <laughs> like, I bought a Mac. <laughs> I bought a Mac. I did a show. I didn't even have it plugged in and was sitting here like shaking it going, why is it not working? You know, uh, I'm a dick as well. At <laughs> uh, all excellent points. And I, do, I do like the friend thing. I've, I've, I've listened to a lot of folks talk about that and, and listened to you talk about it just now. And yeah, it's so true. And there's there's been studies into things that we can only like, the, the humans were not designed or uh, are not equipped to handle the number of people that we interact with on a regular basis and i had to learn this the hard way when i first started doing this i'm like i'm going to talk to everyone and i started over promising and under delivering and now i realize that it's actually like if you try to if you try to be super nice to everyone and super interactive with everyone you're going to fail with everyone so you might as well if, if you say yes to someone without the ability to actually deliver on what you're saying yes to you might as well say no up front it's actually more compassionate and a better thing to do to say Thanks. Uh, you, uh, I love that you're passionate about this stuff. Uh, good luck with what, what you're doing in the future. Uh, unfortunately, because we just don't have the mental capacity to have 100 friends. Uh, yeah. it, there's 100 really nice people in the community and that I really like, uh, but I can't have 100 close friends because, as you say, it just simply it, it's overwhelming and uh, you don't have the time to give everyone that level. But, again, like you say, if you can have – on one hand or two hands, if you have that many friends that are going to be there for you. And it doesn't mean you can't have other people that aren't your close friends that you still hang out with and that you still think are cool. Absolutely you can. But yeah, that, that's a good point. And, uh, and I like that um, uh, Ed here says he heard the great opera singer Kira Chekanawa describe how she would get stage fright and she's a lovely person. So yeah, like you say with Bowie, a lot of people still get that. And a lot of people have that anxiety and that, that self-talk. I mean, the, the song that we opened with, I wrote that because when I first started doing this four or five years ago, I wrote that song because it was all about the fact that you you, you have this self-talk and you have the, if you're an overthinker, if you're a creative person, you're probably an overthinker and you also probably are way too hard on yourself because you've possibly got perfectionistic tendencies. All of those are stereotypes, but I bet 80% of people are probably nodding to at least a couple of those statements. So the whole point of that song is that anxiety is going to be a little voice that talks to you in your head and tells you things, but it lies. It's a lying yeah. asshole sometimes mm -hmm. because it will it will do what I call catastrophize. And this is sort of related to the imposter syndrome. Catastrophizing is like a made-up word, but I like it because it means that you you think what the worst possible thing is going to happen and then your brain just goes and it, it decides that that's what's going to happen and you get so worked up and anxious and worried that that is going to happen that it, it becomes your reality. And it it's the thing is, it's likely to not. Public speaking is the number one thing of this. We catastrophize that we're going to get up there, we're going to sweat, we're going to forget what to say, we're going to faint, we're going to fall, we're going to crack our head, we're going to end up, wake up in the emergency ward uh, with a fractured skull. Like you've, you've gone from, I have to give a five minute talk in front of like 10 people to I'm in the emergency ward with a fractured skull. But that's what anxiety does. That's what your own self-talk can do. It's a liar. And I think sometimes people don't, re they don't listen to the true voice, which you've said, which I know other people have said. And, and Mark said here, uh, Mark says, talk to you yourself the way that you talk to a friend with kindness and honesty. And I think that says it all right there. Yeah, definitely. And um, God, I had a thought there. And now I can't get the thought of a cracked skull and <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> I would have seen if that was me explaining that. You know, I would have taken it further and, and had like a, a prolapsed colon as well <laughs> thrown in there as well. 
Um, well, your your uh, interview last week with Riley was like along those lines. Like, yeah. like yeah, but I guess if you are putting your head in, like, what was he doing? Like in a mask or something? And then he he couldn't breathe, and then he I can't even remember what the story was. Oh, but he had a, he had a stroke on stage. Yeah, it's just ridiculous and again rock and but that's roll. like a one in a million thing it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go out and perform live on stage because you too may have a stroke on stage mid song uh, it, yeah it all comes down to the likelihood but again if you catastrophize you would hear that story and this is the thing this is why i hate the media <laughs> that's a, that's a bold statement this is why i don't watch a lot of media and i think the media have a lot to answer for is that they are a catastrophizing engine they mm -hmm. put out only the worst of the worst. If you watch the news, you will never feel better after watch. Sit down and watch your half hour news. Sit, give, rate yourself out of 10 how you feel, like how positive you feel and how happy you are. And then watch 30 minutes of any news coverage, don't care where it is, and then say, now where is my mental state? Am I happier or less happy than I was? Now that I know all those bad things. And I know some people say to me, but Pete, you gotta know what's going on in the world. Yeah, I do. I, I, I know the basics. I, I cover the basics. I can have a conversation with people about things. But the detailed level, what, the, what peop, some people seem to want to do is know all of the bad stuff. Like if I had to watch every car crash, if I had to watch every disaster, everything that's happening in the world, again, our human brains, our little, little nuggets that are in there don't have the capacity to feel empathy. And if you're an empathic, empathetic person by nature, it's going to make you, it's going to bring you down because yeah. – your brain suddenly wants to solve those problems. You want to solve the the war in Syria. You want to solve the the hunger crisis in Africa. You want to solve the problems in the US and, and the UK, and you can't. And it doesn't mean you walk away from it and say, "Well, I'm just not going to care about this." Of course, you can care about it. But again, knowing the de know, knowing that there was a, a horrific car crash up in the hills yesterday that I saw on the news is, what what can I do? How does that help me? And how do I help those people? I help. Those people, by driving safely when I'm on the road and not going to the hills, because I think it's scary up there. But they're the things that I do. And it's just so weird that people seem to get, almost get off on the negativity and the the, the, the destruction. And yeah, I think it, I think it's 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 a it's a it's a pandemic in itself of negative media. Anyway, that's and, it's the rant. I won't apologise for ranting. No, no, for your ranting. And the <laughs> thing is, the one thing about the news that they have taken away, I, I guess, um places like facebook have ruined this for the news was that, remember at least with the news when they like sold you half an hour of death and destruction at the end there was always a puppy at the end and it was always like yay a puppy but since social media has come everybody just posts puppy videos and cat videos now so now they don't even even fucking bother putting in the animal story at the end it's just like we don't care and again, it, it's all consumer. Like it's all consumer driven. Yeah. If you if you hate reality TV, if you hate all of these stupid music competition shows on TV, and again, the, my opinions. If you love them, more power to you. And you know what? More people love them than hate them because they keep producing them. If nobody watched them, they wouldn't produce it. It's the same with the news. If everyone tuned out and didn't want to see the death and destruction on the news, they would change the news. They're not because people want to see it. True yeah. crime, like true crime, is massive at the moment. All these podcasts and all these shows and things about true crime is because people want to know. People yeah. have interest in that thing. And if if you are genuinely interested in it and you want to you want to watch the news because again, it's it you feel it's important to you, more power to you. Absolutely. But I just know I've seen two and the same with social media because social media is like 24/7 news that goes into that you can't escape from. So every time you go to your social feed, again, because it's everyone and back in the day, so I I equate it to this, like back in the day you had your family and your friends and you like you had a, a group of like 10 people and or, or 20 people and the chances of something really bad happening to 20 people on any given day is pretty low right yeah. now that we've got 2000 200 or 2000 facebook friends and all these acquaintances and random people i'm finding out really bad shit that is happening to people that i have no business contacting but because i went to uh, because i did a course with them in 2001 and then they looked me up and then they friended me and then suddenly they're in their feet in my feet because something bad happened and it's, i don't want to come off as an uncaring person i am a way too caring person which is mm -hmm. the problem is yep. that if i have so many people that i'm finding out about what's happening i don't think again we as humans have the capacity to process that much stuff and it, it's like um uh, we, we wonder, like, everyone goes, 2020, you suck. You've taken so many cool people from us this year. You know why? It's every year. Because, it, 
every year. But yeah, yeah and, and, and it's only going to get more because there's more famous people now than there ever has been. There's more people you know of right now. Like if you're in the 50s and 60s, there's maybe what, 10 musicians, 10 singers, maybe 10 movie stars that any, everyone would know. Like someone in the Beatles died, you'd be sad. If Elvis Presley died, you're sad. If um, James Dean dies, you're sad. Now there's thousands of those people so yeah. every time something happens you're like sean connery died like that's really sad that really really sucks um the jeopardy host uh, alex trebek dies you're like that's really sad i'm really sad but there's so many people to choose from now that i think yeah the, the challenge is how do you look after yourself and make sure you're okay with all of this stuff happening out there and again i know we're super off topic but uh no yeah, no it's and, something and... i think it's a lot you touched on it earlier too about like uh, Facebook. We are the product and all that kind of stuff. Not only have we become the product on something like Facebook, we are now the newscasters. We are spreading the news, and that's how fake news has a because we're unwittingly doing the bidding of whoever wants to spread stuff, and and we're not. We don't even have to be paid to do it. We're they're using our information as payment, and we're. S s spreading all this shit whatever people want it's an incredible thing and at the same time you've got the actual news media which hasn't changed their method of delivery forever just disaster misery and all this shit they're getting paid less they're all losing their jobs they're all desperate to try and have sensational stories meanwhile fucking edna who lives in fucking uh, Geelong, she's posting stories every day going, wow, look at this. Story. And she's she's the fucking news to her circle of friends of like 4,000 people. And it's, pretty, it's an amazing thing that's going on. Yeah. Um, so oh, it's, it, it's fascinating. Like I, I like study. I don't like watching it, but I like studying what's happening from afar because I think it's evolving in a really interesting way and it's, it's kind of like a bit of a soap opera slash car crash it's like what what is going to happen next and i think bubba says it right here which is it's tmi syndrome it's too much information and that's the thing you can you can be overloaded with information in a in a world where you have instant access to every piece of information in the world ever the temptation is to consume constantly 24 7 like always consuming and i'm guilty of it i'm not i'm not going to put my hand up and say i'm, a, I'm above this i get up in the cool. morning and I open up my Facebook feed and I see what people are saying. But usually what people are saying is, uh, what's the best plugin for vocals in GarageBand? How <laughs> yeah. do I connect Skyberg interface to my, uh, to my Mac? Um, because I've deliberately curated. And people can say, oh, you, should, you shouldn't. You should go out there and, and, uh, and have a diverse group of people and get opinions from everyone. And yeah, I do that when I want to. But if that's sort of forced and that's the first thing I look at, I, I can't start my day like that. I want to start my day in a happy and positive way. And yeah, it might, might drag me down through the day, but I at least want to start out with trying to help someone plug in their interface. My last tip on, I'll give you a tip. How I, a lot of people don't know is how, how Facebook works for me. You can have up to 50 people saved as see first in your feed. Go and do it. Pick out yeah. your 50 people, go into your friends and add yep. that little thing. Just click on see first, see first, see first. And every day when you open your feed, the most important people will always be at the top. So by the time you get through scrolling that first 10 minutes, mm. you've covered everything. And then you can go to your garage band group and, and continue there. It's a really great way to filter out the shit because there's a lot of uh, when you're an artist as well you know i have a lot of people who seem to not pay any attention to anything i do and i seem to like pay attention to them and think i don't even know you and i pay attention to you fucking time to delete you bye um i've been <laughs> deleting 10 people a day over the last uh two weeks it's so liberating so do that as well make you happy yeah um, absolutely i'm gonna ask now about red light fever Ooh, yeah, Red I know. Light fever. I think I keep try, I keep trying to remember to bring it back to music because we are a music uh, show. But um, <laughs> yeah. So red light fever, and assuming you mean this, not uh, going to certain districts in the city at certain times of night. Um, I'm assuming you're meaning the I red meant. light fever. <laughs> what what red light fever were you thinking of? I was thinking of the uh, when the record light goes on, you suddenly suck balls and can't play anything uh, or record anything or sing in the right key, uh, which happens to me all the time and uh, it used to happen to me on live shows and i know uh sarah newman who was here earlier she talks about this a lot that when you when you can sit there and and i've done interviews and i've had chats and i've done shows and you're sitting there and you're rehearsing and especially like you and i will be backstage and we'll be talking and then you hit the, you hit the, the live button and then suddenly you, you forget how to speak and you forget how to, to put sentences together and it's the same with recording you can be jamming away and you can be practicing and you're like yeah this riff is awesome you hit record and you're like, 
the, wait, what, what's my name again? Um, what, what's going on? So yeah, it, it, it blanks you out. And again, it's, it's a lot of it is that anxiety. A lot of it is yep. that we're perfectionists and we have perfectionistic tendencies and we want things to be perfect. And you, you put pressure on yourself. And the thing is when you're in a relaxed state, when you're doing something like right now, right now, my, my heart rate would be like 70 beats a minute. I'm sitting here chilling, chilled. I'm rela- as relaxed as I possibly could be. Uh, I'm in my happy place here in my in my audio cave. So everything is cool. But it hasn't always been the case. It's taken me a lot of practice and a lot of repetition to get here. And I think that's the big thing about red light fever, is that we we think about the fact of recording used to be super important. You, you used to equate recording to you have to record it, you have to get it right, because if you don't get it right, then you have to wind back the tape and you've only got a certain amount of tape and maybe you've booked studio time, you've only got two hours of studio time to do it. What I like to emphasize these days is that we have unlimited retries or or unlimited credits. I think on the last rant I said exactly this, which is it's like walking into an arcade if you're a video game player like I was back in the day and you had those lock-ins where you got to go into the arcade and you got to get, play Ninja Turtles over and over again until you finished it. You didn't have to pump in any quarters or, or 20 cent pieces. It's like that with recording. You've got the capacity, you've got the ability to record, do as many takes as you want and just repeat and try and do it because some, someone in a live show yesterday said, hey, any tips on being able to sing in key, sing in tune, anything I should do to my mixes? And I said, yeah, I've got an amazing tip. It, it's going to change your life. It's revolutionary. Practice. Like keep practicing and keep trying until you get it. Like, right, mind blown. I think we have a bit of a quick fix society and we have a bit of a instant on, I want it now. The only way to get better at this stuff is to do it, suck at it, and then do it again and yeah. suck a little bit less and then do it a third time. And eventually, after a lot of times, but if you saw my first live streams, my first videos five years ago, they were crap. And the audio was crap. The video was crap. My content was pretty shoddy, but I tried. Like what I always say, what I made, what I lacked in quality and talent are made up for it enthusiasm and passion and that will come through and eventually you'll get the technical stuff down it's the same with your red light fever my view on that is if you keep doing it you do it again and again you will eventually forget that you're recording and you'll be good to go what do you think jay yeah look i agree with all of that stuff too um i I, but the way i look at red light fever because again these are things we're talking about because no matter your skill level, whatever you think your skill level is or whatever somebody else thinks your skill level is, it's always as good as the last moment that you thought it was or the last thing that you did, and it can be erased within a second. I think um, we're, with, with red light fever, not only does it come down to your self-belief that you, know, you think, why, why can't I do it as good as I did it before? You know what? Sometimes... You don't need to do it perfect. This is the most important thing. And you mentioned this too with the old way people recorded with tape and all this stuff and there were time limits and it cost money. Some of the most amazing recordings in the world that we listen to, like the Beatles and so many of them, Elvis Presley, you name them, the takes that are on those recordings that have become legendary status were Mm. fuck-ups. And and that is what it is. And how many of you have sat there during red light fever and mm-hmm. done a take and gone, well, that sucks. It doesn't fit. I'll just leave it anyway. And then you've layered something else on top of that recording. And by the time you layer everything up, that fuck up that you did for some unbeknown reason <laughs> makes the song amazing. For some yeah. reason, it's just that part that, and now forever in a day, whenever you hear that song, once you've finished it, you go, Oh my God, that's that bit that was a total mistake and I love it. If it wasn't there, it, it wouldn't be right. So red light fever, it, it, again, it, it comes back to mistakes make you better because uh, not only can mistakes um, help you improve the next time by possibly not doing them, but sometimes those mistakes make the thing that you're doing the thing that's going to capture everybody's imagination and make you bar up. As they say, <laughs> um, as that's, I don't know if you've seen this film, it's this horror film with Gavin Woods in it. <laughs> you know, Gavin Woods is from Countdown, and there's yeah. a scene, they're on a boat, and he goes, Come up here, guys, you'll love the view, you'll bar up. And I, I know I say that all the time, but no, seriously, embrace the suck, exactly what Bubba says there. Yeah, um, because red light fever is it's like anything, it's think of it like Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger fucked off as soon as people stopped giving him energy. As soon as you stop giving red light fever or anxiety or all this stuff energy, you know what? It just fades the fuck away. 
it, yeah, it, it, it's super true. And you're right that the best things are often the mistakes or that we, we when you're in your flow zone when you're doing things. And this is why whilst I don't dig noodling, like I think you can you can sit around noodling on your guitar or noodling and, and not actually creating. I think that can be dangerous. But if you're going to, hit record, like just record because those happy accidents become some of the best stuff that you do. Um, I'll tell a quick story on this. Uh, I have a song called Goats, which I recorded a couple of years ago, and it's uh, one of my favourite songs to, to to listen to of my own. I know you got to listen to your own music, people. By the yes. way, it's not conceited. If if you don't like it, if you don't think it rocks, then you got big problems. So listen to your own music. Um, but I listen to Goats now, and there's two parts in there that weren't. I had no intention of doing them. But I was doing some vocal takes. I was getting super frustrated. Red light fever. I just kept stuffing up. Couldn't get it right. And so one time I'm like, all right, I'm just going to grab my handheld mic and I'm going to rock out as if I'm on stage singing this song. So like it hit, the start is like a drum beat. It goes, doo, 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 doo. And I'm like, okay, I'm on stage. I'm like, one, two, one, two, three, let's go. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's cool. And I like, <laughs> started singing the song. And the entire take of that song now is pretty much that take. And there was a bit in the middle there where I go, dads to the left, dads to the right. Because I was literally standing there with my, with my microphone, dancing to the left and dancing to the right. And uh, 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 intending to completely cut that out because that was during a breakdown bit just before the bridge. And I just like, I was listening back. I'm like, that's so cool. That's staying in there. And now it's like my kind of my favorite bit of the song is where you get into the middle. And for no reason, for a complete random bit, it's just like dance to the left, dance to the right. I'm like, that, that's staying in. So yeah, those, those happy accidents that you just do when, you, when you're in your flow state, when you, when you find a way to just unwind and relax into it, they're the best things. And I, I say that whenever I'm doing your music live shows and I'm listening to people's music or people send me songs to listen to their lyrics, uh, you can help with vocalists in particular, but even with guitarists, you can tell when someone is gripping the mic too tight because mm. they're nervous or they're gripping their guitar too tight. It, it comes across in how you play. The more relaxed you can be into it and the more you just push out and give 100% of yourself – the better it's going to sound. You can really hear when someone's singing or playing within themselves because they're lacking in the confidence. Let it go. Uh, embrace the suck, exactly as Bubba said. Just let it go. And if you're gonna if you're gonna screw it up, screw it up spectacularly. Like get it. Don't don't not quite hit the note. The thing is, but when people are singing, they try to sing within themselves, and what you end up being is slightly flat or sharp on pretty much every note. But collectively, it's not that bad. But if you're gonna go for it, go for it. And you may miss it and you may miss it completely spectacularly, but then try it again because that take where you actually hit it is going to be epic and it's going to be way more epic than if you try to be conservative and sing or play within yourself on every take, you're going to uh, get something that you're going to be super proud of. So yeah, just, just do it. If you want to use a slogan, let's, let's all be like Nike and just do it. Yeah. Kurt Cobain is one of the most perfect artists you can look at for this kind of thing. You know, he didn't always hit it. He certainly didn't always hit it, but that's what was the magic source that he didn't hit it because it was the 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 pain and what was coming at the honesty and the, the the suffering or the joy or whatever he was trying to get out came out in the struggle of him trying to reach those notes, trying to convey that, and Ooh. that's why he was such a, a big loss. Even though you know, I think for me, just on Nirvana. A lot of his lyrics I couldn't even fucking understand. Yeah. But what I could get from it by the scratchiness and the, and the struggle and the strain in his voice was the emotion that he was trying to convey. It didn't really matter if he was talking about mosquitoes or libidos. It really didn't matter because you, you got the sense that, uh, that there was struggle and, and that's what it's all about. Another thing I think of for Red Light Fever, just to finish on this, is just think like you're going to a brothel. They never turn out, those nights never turn out bad. And there's a red light out the front there. So you're just going to have a good time. <laughs> Always have to take it to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. I was, well, as soon as we went red light fever, I'm like, well, I know we'll circle back. Though. I know Jake will find a way to bring it back. <laughs> and yes, uh, yes, Steve, someone did say epic. I know you have a trademark on the word epic every time. Oh, every time we say epic, everyone has to take a drink and uh, think about Steve and his epic synth songs. Yeah, just don't let Epic Games know about it. They'll sue you. Oh, I love, oh, mate, I love some Epic Pinball. I could totally go and play some Epic Pinball right now. If I, wasn't, if I didn't have another show in 15 minutes, I would totally go and play Epic Pinball. It's one of my yeah. favourite games. Right. So we are getting close to wrapping up. So let's, the, the last two, I'm going to cut the last one because I think we've covered everything around, you know, uh, opinions, syndrome, uh, imposter syndrome, red light fever, believing in yourself, all this kind of stuff. It all ties in together. Trust yep. yourself. Trust your gut. Just go with it, you know, and... and 
and listen to the voice and then piss it off. So we'll finish with that. But I want to, and, and I had a topic here just sticking to your roots. And I don't even need to say it. Just say that word. Stick to your roots. Stick to what you know is best. Let's talk about Apple before we go, because that's going to lead nicely into your show that's coming up very sure. soon. So I just want to cover quickly. Do you know about this? So Apple are cutting the take of 30% down to certain developers who are selling under so many apps to 15%. This is something that they are going to do. I think it's a really good thing for developers. I can't remember the number, but it's it's possibly off my head. I think it's like under a million sales or so. So Epic has taken them to court over all this stuff and all these big companies trying to, you know, get a a, a bigger slice of the pie. And it's actually fucking backfired on them. And now the more independent developers (laughs) are getting more money. So I think this is a great thing. I kind of like that. It's a bit of a middle, yeah, middle, middle finger to the uh, the folks that are out there trying to get more. And uh, if it's going to help independent creators and, and make more money. And uh, we talked about apps before, and I think it's really important. I know when you had uh, Jakob Hack, who um, I interviewed recently, and you talked a lot about uh, the developers and the fact that supporting developers is super important. Like, it, it is. It's so important. Like, people, I know free is good. I love free as much as the next person, and I love cheap as well. But these are folks that are putting their blood, sweat, and tears into creating stuff that is the best it possibly can be so that you can create. And they deserve support, especially the independent ones, especially the ones that listen to their – spinning it all the way back to what we were talking about at the start around the consumer and the end user and customer experience and showing what you do and listening to your users, listening to those using the apps. I think this is cool. And I, I do like that. Apple do these surprising little things sometimes. Just when you think that they're the big trillion-dollar heartless corporation, they'll come out and do something kind of cool. So, yeah, that that is good news. And uh, hey, hopefully uh, Apple Music will do that as well. If we, if for, for us independent artists, maybe we can get eighty-five percent of our streaming instead of seventy percent. That would be kind of cool. Let's hope. So I'm going to finish on this because I know you've got a stream to go to, and I didn't want to like harp on the whole M1 Mac stuff mm-hmm. that we both have yes. so instead of us having a massive rant on that let's just have a paragraph of how your first week of four days maybe has gone with your apple mac and what do you see for the future it's been a little rough i'm going to be honest because uh you know i didn't get a free review unit and i don't have to talk positively or negatively i can i bought it myself and uh, i can say what i want but yeah the the reason it's been a little rough is that mostly because my zoom live track hasn't worked yet i haven't spent a lot of time troubleshooting it i i, I hope here's what i hoped going in that i would basically be able to lift and shift my entire workflow because i thought i don't use a lot of stuff most of my stuff's browser based i use Streamyard for live streaming the only hardware i really rely upon is the live track so that's what i bring in my ipad and i bring everything in but without that working it's been hard to, to shift over my workflow um the ios stuff is not disappoint. I didn't expect it to be good. Like I'd already done my research and I knew that iOS apps wouldn't be running the way that I wanted them to. I, again, I had this dream going in that it would be great for me because I demo a lot of apps and I use the iPad here and I have to mirror that to my screen. I thought, hey, if I could just run those on the Mac and then use my mouse and keyboard that I use anyway, I should be able to just stream that and, and use that. So that hasn't worked out exactly the way I thought either. Uh, and I just haven't had the time. So because this week's been pretty big, it's been the Black Friday thing, I've had a couple of shows to do on that. I, And this is the advice I give to everyone else. I made sure that I still had all of my setup here that I can continue to do the work that I need to get done. And this was always going to be an added extra. So I didn't want to sacrifice getting content out, creating videos, doing live streams, interacting with viewers and all the rest of the stuff that I do every week to set up a new Mac. Now, I know for you it's been a little bit different because you have had the time and you've focused a lot more of your streams on it and you've probably had more success with it. So, uh, yeah, for, for those that haven't uh, haven't followed your journey, uh, how, how is it, Jay? What's your what, one and a half day worth of play? How are you, uh, how are you finding things? Okay, so uh, I think I said before that I had a very specific idea of what I wanted my Mac to be and it was very simple it was a lot more simple than what yours was so you know you're looking at moving your whole production for your show across onto there and and you know I do believe with time because I know what you're like too you are 
just because we've been friends for a while now, you put a little bit of effort into let's see if this works and go, oh, I'm a bit disappointed there, but I think that Zoom thing will be sorted out. So just with a bit more time on it. So I don't think yep. it's going to be as, as bad as that just to, you know, it's, it's it's you need to put in the time, as you said. You yeah. you're shifting everything across to it. Mike's and why I got the thing was to be able to be able to use GarageBand on Mac and to look at things like uh, Logic uh, and to look at things like Final Cut to be able to move across from iOS to Mac to collaborate with other musicians that I know and want to do some more collaboration that have Macs only. So that's really what it was all about. I didn't need a, I really didn't need a new Mac because my laptop is a beast and it does, I mean, you know, it, it streams out to five different services at once. It, it's, it's handling four cameras at once. It's a it's killer beast laptop. Um, setting it up initially was interesting. I already knew how it operated, so I've never owned one, but I knew how to use it. Um, the iOS apps thing I've been covering. I did a two hour live stream on my Patreon. If you're not a member of my Patreon, you can do that from a dollar a day and you'll find it. I'm going to be doing lots more shows on it. What I've got from the apps, uh, here it is. So I think the future's bright because... Uh, and why I asked the question about the 15%, I think Apple are offering 15% to developers to try and entice them to start future releasing their new apps on iOS, iPhone and iPad and Mac. So we're going to see a lot of those apps for new releases. A yep. lot of the older apps, we're not going to see as many people go back and fix them up. Maybe some of the bigger companies because they have the staff to do it. will do that like LumaFusion have done it. Yep. Because I have a lot of apps, if you watched my Patreon stream yesterday, there's about a thousand of my apps that I own that were appearing in the um, Mac App Store. The problem was a lot of them are dead apps. They're abandoned where that companies haven't even touched for years. So that's the only reason they're there because Apple decided in their infinite wisdom that they would just opt every app in and all the developer developers have had to go back and opt out if they don't want their apps in there so i think over time those developers are going to start putting their apps back in but mm -hmm. um look i think the future is good for it uh, uh, but again i'll finish on don't buy one unless you have a specific use case for them and you absolutely need it that is it don't just get it because it's the latest thing because it's not going to solve all your problems no, it, it's definitely not. And again, like to, to your point earlier about the person that said, oh, I'm replacing this with like my, my 64 gig. It, it, these are not designed to replace. If you're an absolute content creator and you've got a workflow that works seamlessly for you right now, just keep using it until like let all the first gen people like us iron out the bugs and get it up and running and then just wait a little bit. Like there's no rush on this stuff. I got it. Yeah. Because again, like over the next week, I'm going to be doing a lot more with it and I'm going to be showing folks. And I wanted I wanted folks that maybe had the misconception. The reason I did the couple of shows that I did is folks that had the misconception that it's just going to be this perfect seamless experience that everything's going to work, that all your iOS apps will run. It doesn't quite work like that. So if anything, d definitely take your time with it. Watch what Jay does, watch what I do. And then, yeah, we might get to the point where we're like, actually in a month or a, or a few weeks, it's great. It, it's doing everything we want it to do. But yeah, th there is time. You can you can take the time. Exactly. Relax. So, yeah. Pete, thank you for joining me today. Um, I have me. I can hear the music in the background. That means it's time to go. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank uh, the wonderful Pete Johns for joining me on the rant today. It's always a pleasure to have you on here. I know you've got a show coming up, folks. So jump over to Pete's channel and check that out. We're looking at his uh, Black Friday apps. So yes, get over and do that. Best buys that I uh, use and recommend, and a couple of ones that I've never used before. So that could be a bit of fun. All his social media stuff and music are in the description. You can do all that stuff. You can check us out on Hado App on iOS.com, and I'll see you next week. Keep creating, keep doing the stuff and the things and all the stuff. And adios, amigos. Goodbye for now.